Welcome to the Daily Decrypt, where currency competition will set you free. I am Amanda B. Johnson, your host, and today's episode is brought to you by Privacy Shell. If you've been in the crypto sphere for very long, you've likely heard about OpenBazaar, the peer-to-peer -peer protocol intended for use as marketplaces. I've spoken today with OpenBazaar's project lead, Brian Hoffman, about its move recently from testnet to mainnet and all that that entails. So you are Brian Hoffman. Uh, Project lead, and I want to I want to say lead developer because that's a term I've heard more often. But I I'm betting project lead is different. So tell us what you do at Open Bazaar. Okay, yeah, uh, my role started out as the primary developer on the project, so it's kind of morphed into more of a maintainer role as more people got involved. But I basically manage the whole project, make sure that we understand what direction we're going in, and um, kind of developer wrangling is the general responsibility that I have. Developer wrangling. All right, all right. And uh, Open Bazaar went mainnet, what, like three days ago or something? Is that correct? Uh, Monday, yeah. OK, yep. So to start off, um, I want to get a firm grasp of the network architecture, basically. like So let's say I, w I want to start an Open Bazaar store that I want to sell cookies. And um, am I going to host my store or is my store hosted by everybody who is running Open Bazaar at any given time? How does that work? Uh, yes and yes. Uh, so it's kind of a mix. So we have a peer to peer network. Uh, so everybody runs the app and all the apps talk to each other directly. But uh, only some of the data is actually shared across the nodes. So for instance, if I send a chat message to somebody, um, that encrypted message will get stored within the network somewhere. It could be on any of, of the nodes based on some technical stuff. Um, and then when you would log back on, you could retrieve those chat messages. Uh, but other data such as store listings, uh, which, which include large images and, and lots of data about the about the product or service you're selling, those we uh, have decided to not store within the network because um, as the network is young and small and only full of so many users, we don't wanna burden everybody else with uh, potentially spam or, or something like that. So we are looking at other alternatives uh, that in the future, we won't require people to actually have to run their stores from their home computer 24 hours a day. Uh, there will probably be other nodes that are kind of like storage nodes or something like that. But mm -hmm. that's probably a little ways out. And so right now, yes, you will have to run it yourself. Mm -hmm. And um, uh, what kind of, I guess, okay, all right. Um, about, are you aware of how many people are are running a node right now? And I guess when I say running a node, that sounds like, whoa, like downloading a blockchain. But I mean, yeah. one can be considered a node by simply having the Open Bazaar client open on one's computer, correct? Yeah, yeah, exactly. So when we use, we use the term node pretty loosely, it's not as intense as a Bitcoin full node per se. Right. Um, it's more of just a peer on the network. So peer yeah. is probably a better term, but yeah. Uh, everybody is a peer, they all have, they run a, uh, a node, so to speak, on the network that connect to each other. Yeah. Do you know about how yeah. many people are are using Open Bazaar like right now, like at any given moment? Is that something that can be seen? Uh, the metrics for the network are pretty uh, challenging to really nail down exactly, since it's not a centralized service. But um, I can I can give you a few numbers that might give you a better idea. So since Monday, we've gotten about. Uh, close to 37,000 downloads of the software. And uh, we run uh, one of the recommended nodes to connect to when you start the software. So by default, most users will add that person as a, as a like to follow them. Uh, that node right now has somewhere between seven and 8,000 followers, I believe. So those would be people that actually got up on the network and, and were running. Um, and I think According to some other statistics that are captured, we we see several hundred storefronts live at any given time right now. Okay, and now I was considering uh, making a storefront myself to sell, you know, like hey, like daily decrypt sponsorship packages, which we already sell on our website. 
Um, and then I had to pause because um, I read a piece the other day in which you actually were interviewed. Uh, I forget where it was published. I will post the link mm -hmm. below after I've found it again. Uh, in which you said that um, privacy measures were specifically not added to the Open Bazaar protocol. And so if I were to host a daily decrypt store, would anybody be able to, say, find out my IP address? Yeah, so one of the natures of the peer-to-peer the -peer network is that um, your node's IP address is exposed uh, at the moment. So it's not any different than what Skype has been like for, you know, over a decade. I think they just recently started hiding the IP addresses. But, um, you know, essentially when I say the privacy wasn't uh, prioritized, what I mean was that we've gotten a lot of requests for having uh, Tor anonymizer support. And that would allow people to run stores completely uh, obfuscated from any other place. To, to have hidden services running. And that's something that we put on the back burner just because of several reasons, which I've, I've it might even be in that post that you link, but um, you know, just due to technical challenges and, and other priorities such as network stability, though having something like Tor support slows down the network. Um, and, w and when it's so small and, and immature, it's hard to optimize efficiency when you have something else on top of it, slowing things down. Uh, there's, there's, I mean, there's a lot of reasons, but your data is yeah. not in, it's not insecure. Um, just because your IP address is exposed does not mean that we are not doing encryption between all of the nodes. Other uh, nodes cannot see what you're viewing or purchasing or or sharing. Um, all of that is still encrypted and protected. So merchants and buyers don't have anything to to be concerned about. Like you you buying some uh, ointment or something is not is not exposed on the network just because your IP address is there. I think the things that you might be exposed to are if you are a popular merchant, perhaps somebody decides to try and maybe DDoS your your node or something like that, but your privacy is not really impacted other than that being exposed. All right, so let's uh, shift gears to monetization. Now, if I remember correctly, um, Open Bazaar at the project, uh, received uh, about a million US dollars in some venture capital funding last year from, I believe, Andreessen Horowitz. Is that correct? Yeah, Union Square Ventures led the round with Andreessen. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, and, and we got a million dollars. Yep, OK. And so what is the return on investment model there? So for them, I believe, and you know, I mean, obviously, they could clarify further if they wanted, but um, their idea is that this technology is, is something that it's a long term goal. It's not something that they see as being uh, an eBay usurper tomorrow. Uh, they see it as a, as a long term play. And so, you know, that's that's how they approach it, approach it. And in terms of an ROI, I don't think that they expect a significant amount of return on their investment like within a year. I think most generally VC plays are, are looking at five to ten year time spans for, for huge returns. And they are hoping that this is something that's big, not not uh, a $5 million return, but you know, a billion dollar or 2 billion, because that's the kind of companies they invest in. So um, I How think that- How would that, that return you know, come about? Like, would there be like, are there fees on the network or like, how would, you know, regardless of how long it takes to get a return, like literally how would the, how would funds go from Open Bazaar users back to uh, the folks at uh, the venture capital firm? That's a great question. Um, so basically what will happen is, is that our company is actually called OB1. Um, open Bazaar is actually the open source protocol, right? And there's no profit generation from that. Like OB1 does not own any of the code, does not profit from transactions, et cetera. What OB1 is going to be gearing up to do is provide services to merchants and users that will be valuable that they'll want to pay for in more of an a la carte style, as opposed to eBay, where you pay no matter what uh, for all the services. And so some of the things that we're looking at are um, uh, curated listings, uh, maybe promoted search, improved search capabilities. So, I mean, some of this stuff is not like it's not like a whiz bang, like one feature. It's more of a suite of things and services that we could provide. And, uh, you know, obviously our other responsibilities are to foster the network. So 
Uh, there's a lot going on. We'll probably have a lot more to announce in the next few months as we get through the launch. Um, so hopefully we'll have plenty of ROI for them to enjoy. Mm -hmm. And now what would you, so say I am a, an, a person who sells my things on eBay or Etsy or Amazon or whatever. Uh, why, why would I want to use Open Bazaar to sell my things? Well, I think that there's a lot of good reasons why you'd want to do that. One is, uh, you know, at least initially, there's not a lot of really great places that focus specifically on Bitcoin to sell your goods. There used to be a marketplace called BitMit back in the day, and it, it wasn't super popular, but it started to prove the concept that, that these Bitcoin specific marketplaces could spring up. And so, uh, you know, one of the foundational reasons why we built Open Bazaar is because we wanted to open up trade globally uh, for everybody. A lot of marketplaces that are centralized, they have uh, legal obligations to do KYC kind of things for their customers. So then they basically back off of offering their service in smaller countries or maybe third world countries, uh, places that have challenging laws, or they don't understand the international ramifications of doing business there where Open Bazaar doesn't have that limitation. Anybody anywhere can spring up a store. Uh, we've seen over 126 countries uh, have users that, that run the software and they're selling goods to each other. They're, they're selling whatever they want, however they want, for how much money they want to sell it for. Um, and that's a really powerful concept. I don't think that people understand, um, you know, it's, it's very simple, it's very easy and frictionless to jump on an Etsy and sell products here in the US, but in other places, they don't have that opportunity. And so I think opening those doors is, is just, um, to us, it's, it's a groundbreaking thought. And that's, that's our primary focus. You know, whether, whether it meets all of the requirements for something that you're expecting, I mean, we have a lot of users that are either unhappy or happy based on things that we've done. Um, but we have a vision of, of opening up that trade. And the fact that it costs nothing other than the Bitcoin transaction really helps too. Um, we had a guy sell, um, I believe he sold like waffle cookies or something that he and his family make at home on the network. They made a bunch of orders and I think they, they processed that whole order for like five cents, which is pretty crazy because if you sell 40, $40 of goods on, on an eBay, you're going to pay like $4 at least, um, in fees. So that's a huge savings if you're doing a lot of, a lot of trades. Yeah, potentially, uh, aside from the, the hosting that would be required to continually keep your store up, that would that would have a cost to it, however. Yeah, I mean, some people are running it off of their local, you know, their, their own ISP. They're running it on their own home computer. Some are running on Raspberry Pis. And some people that are more serious want it uh, to be up on hosting uh, and running on DigitalOcean for $10 a month. Mm -hmm. um, I think you know, like I said before, we're going forward, we're going to be working really hard to lessen the burden on running a store for users. We, we definitely recognize that that kind of sucks in some respects, but, um, you know, we definitely will be improving that. And I think that, you know, what we see right now will look a lot different in the future as we evolve. Mm -hmm. uh, so if there were to be a, if there were to be like, say a fork, of Open Bazaar, and the only difference between your the current version of Open Bazaar and this fork was that the fork uh, protected IP addresses using, as you mentioned, perhaps Tor or or however else it did that. Uh, do you think that that network would perform better or not better than than current Open Bazaar? That's an interesting question because. I think there's a couple of things you got to unpack there. Um, one one thing to note up front, though, is that if someone came and forked Open Bazaar, let's say, to add one feature, let's say, anonymous access, it'd be very easy for us to pull that back into our code as well and 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 gain that. And we do that a lot. People submit pull requests to our our code, and we we merge it, and we get new features. That's that's how open source works. So I, I don't think we're at a huge threat there, unless it's something we really don't want to do. Um, will it make the network, uh, how will it affect the network to, to implement something like that? I think it could only make it grow. Uh, having that kind of capability is on our roadmap. And so we think it's super important. Uh, where I think it will affect growth 
may may be in more of the darknet marketplace type of activity. Um, we've already seen people trying, even on our existing network, to to sell illegal goods and services. Um, whether they're real or not, I don't know. But um, you know, I definitely think that that would improve it because they have needs too. They have an, a marketplace that needs to be as efficient as possible. And if a new tool comes along that makes things more efficient for them, more secure, private, they're going to move to it. And that's out of our control. But I think that that proves the value of having a decentralized network like Open Bazaar is that um, there is nothing. It's up to the users to decide what is appropriate on the network, what happens, what goes on. It's not up to us, uh, us as the developers or uh, as OB1 to dictate to users what they should and shouldn't do. That, that's their responsibility. All right, so let's say I see uh, that there's an open bazaar store that is selling like the best looking uh, ecstasy or, or LSD that I've ever seen. And I decide that rather than paying them for it, uh, I wonder if I could just perhaps go just steal it from them instead. Uh, how would I find out the IP address that their store is running? Um, so I think, uh, you know, uh, their IP address is exposed, but I think if you were going to run something where you had that kind of a concern, let's say I was, I was dealing with anything valuable, a, a sock pile of gold, say, um, and I didn't want people to find me, uh, you can run the service through a VPN. Uh, so if you have a trusted VPN service, you can hide your IP. Um, we've run our services through different VPNs, even multiple VPNs. Uh, so it looks like you're in uh, India or somewhere else. So I think um, some of the concerns about that are a little bit overblown. I, I would say even uh, Tor is not flawless. We've seen that uh, be proven. So um, when when we talk in absolutes, I think it's 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 dangerous because security is always evolving. And, and as, a, as someone who's been in cybersecurity for over 10 years, I'm very intimately familiar with the challenges there. And it's not something that we ignore. We take it very seriously. So, so is, is there, a, uh, aside from Tor, uh, to, to try to obfuscate IP addresses, which, as you've said, has been proven to be not perfectly secure if the attacker is quite motivated and quite well funded. Um, are there any other ways aside from Tor to just obfuscate IP addresses, or is that just kind of like not how TCP IP works? I, I think that there's there's numerous technologies out there. Uh, Tor is obviously the most well funded and and most uh, respected and most used. But you know, there's other things like I2P, which is something we're looking at as well, which may be not as secure. Uh, since it's not used as much, I, I, you know, we're not, I'm personally not an I2P uh, super expert or anything, but, um, you know, that's safe to assume that, that, you know, government attackers or anybody else are probably looking at that as, and looking for vulnerabilities as well. So uh, I think at the moment, you know, the combination of running with VPNs and Tor is, is kind of best practices. Now, whether that's the same for a peer-to-peer -peer network, since Tor is not really designed for peer-to-peer -peer traffic, uh, that remains to be said, but um, since it's on our roadmap, we're going to be finding out very soon how well it works, uh, you know, and, and be investigating that. And if anybody watching this or, or reads about what we're doing has expertise in that, we'd love to have their assistance as well. Very good. What do you think the killer app for Open Bazaar is? Um, we were just talking about that this morning. Uh, I think one thing that's surfaced as we've used it this last week is uh, for digital goods. Um, I think it's a, a perfectly seamless way of transferring digital goods to other people. We see people selling songs, music. I even bought a uh, a little bit of random a random number that was generated by someone uh, for like thirty cents or something, um, and it and it and it worked flawlessly. It was it was great, um, and I, I haven't seen anything so frictionless doesn't require you to sign up for an account, verify your email, do anything. I mean, you just send a few Bitcoins, the next thing you know, you have your your, your digital goods. So that's that's one thing that's, that's super exciting for us. And I think as we improve the ability to transfer those goods, um, we'll just see more and more growth there, hopefully. All right. Well, uh, to to finish things up, uh, you want to tell us a bit about the, this OB1, your your company, aside from Open Bazaar Development, which is 
the intended vehicle for offering basically services because I mean I guess aside from hosting costs open bazaar could be considered like a freemium model like all y'all say hey here's the protocol and here ob1 here's some services that we might potentially want to sell yeah I think um, as, as the main developers of the open bazaar project were very very familiar with the the limits and the and the potential gaps uh, that are needed to be filled uh, in the networks. For instance, search is a is a kind of a hard experience to create on a on a decentralized network because it's not very efficient and search needs to be very quick and, and optimized. So that's potentially an area that we're looking at really really hard is um, how do we help merchants get their products discovered? We now have this marketplace that's open to just about anywhere anywhere and anyone anywhere in the world, but that doesn't mean that you're getting the visibility for, for great things that you're putting out there, right? Like if there's just a billion items, how do you make it easy for people to discover good stuff? And, and that's going to be something that we really, really work on hard. Um, we're going to be working with merchants and that's a potential avenue for a lot of uh, revenue growth, I think, because merchants invest a lot of money into advertising, promotions, things like that. And if we can provide a compelling tool that, that augments the Open Bazaar Network, um, that could be a really, really huge opportunity. So that, that's some of what we're looking at right now, but it's still early days. We just got the network live. Our primary focus is making sure that Open Bazaar works properly, works efficiently, um, and that the core things uh, operate well. And then we'll be worrying about revenue. Mm -hmm. So I know some companies work backwards from that, but uh, our, our our, our primary interest in getting the company funded was to fund development of Open Bazaar, not make a billion dollars. So that, that that will remain our our primary goal. Like a your description reminds me of I guess torrent tracking sites, um, BitTorrent being the protocol, um, but the torrent tracking sites being really what what makes BitTorrent usable to begin with to, as you said, find what it is that you want out of the millions or billions of files that are flowing through the peer to peer protocol. That's exactly right. That's exactly right. Um, you know, you see searching on BitTorrent client doesn't really work very well, but a site like Pirate Bay, which is centralized where they can control that experience works really great uh, for discovery. And, and I'm sure they're making tons of money off of ad revenue and things like that. So yeah, it's a proven model and uh, it's obviously low hanging fruit that any company can go out there and, and do. Mm -hmm. And we, we hope to compete as well. Yeah. Well, so when you, uh, last question, when you say that the sort of um, the, the privacy aspects uh, are on the roadmap, are we talking roadmap two months out, roadmap one year out or, or what's that looking like? Uh, <laughs> I'm probably the wrong person to ask. I, I told everybody that the project would be out in four months when it came out in April 2014, and, and here we are, <laughs> April 2016. Yeah, just, just about out, to so. say, whatever you tell me, I'm going to times by five regardless anyway. That's probably fair. That's probably fair and safe. Um, but, yeah, I, I, I think, you know, just based on funding and, and our position in the market and stuff, I think we're going to have to do it really, really soon. And, um, you know, we're just a small team of, of six guys. We, we only have like one or two back end programmers that are, you know, paid to work on it. Um, so it's not something that we can just crank out in a week, but it's, it's definitely already in progress and we're working towards it. So I would say it's months, not years before mm -hmm. we'll see it. And, um, is is will so should ob1 come to function as like as you said like a pirate bay like basically like as a search functionality for all of the product products that are available on open bazaar do you plan to shun people who want to buy and sell things that are illegal or do you plan to index all of the products on open bazaar regardless of what they are yeah, no, I, I think it would probably be the former uh, because, you know, we are a U.S. corporation and so we are beholden to U.S. laws and we, we wouldn't want to put our, our our employees and our and their families in any kind of danger by doing things that, that fall afoul of U.S. law. Um, and so, yeah, unfortunately, I think that that would be something that would probably be more restrictive. But, you know, that's that's the beauty of the, the open protocol is that you can use that core experience. It may not be as efficient. Uh, is what we're doing, but you know, 
if you do choose to do that and you want to do that and take that risk on, you know, that we will probably have competition from that angle. <laughs> so. Well, that's a that's an excellent note to finish on, Brian. Uh, for the the Daily Decrypt, we always say that we're all about uh, currency competition in particular, but competition in general, really. So, thank you for your time, and yeah, best of luck. Thanks for a great question. Today's episode is brought to you by Privacy Shell, a company building crypto and blockchain companies. Privacy Shell today announced the feedback release of Top Secret, a secure P2P browser-based chat app available for lifetime use for one Bitcoin or is free for a limited time when you use the promo code Daily Decrypt in the checkout process at privacyshell.com. Well, kids, that's all I've got for you today. Why don't you tell me in the comment section whether or not you would ever host a store on Open Bazaar? Why or why not? Cheerio. Could a digital currency, a cryptocurrency, run without a blockchain? Such was my question for MadeSafe's Paige Peterson. A network node is the nodes that are hosting and routing data. And then the client node is one that the user, the client, interacts with.